Hello everybody, this is Bud. Uh, I have just, just now, very much now, one minute ago, I, I updated i3s, made a bug fix release as always, you know. The big release is actually here, enter the centered <laughs> i3sen. Some of you might remember this uh, script uh, because uh, it's quite old. It's uh, as old as, uh, it's actually older than i3 FIDA, this thing. And I think it was originally part of i3s, but um, I actually mo removed it from i3s and, and didn't think I had it was public, but it has actually been public all along. Let me tell you the story here. It's now part of i3s. So if, if we open the wiki page for it, we can. It's a very short description, very easy to understand how this works. Uh, if you trigger i3sen, it will move the current window to a clean workspace, but put it in a centered, floating, tabbed container. Uh, triggering the command on a window that is already sen will move it back to the workspace it came from. So we can test it here. I3 sen. There. Puts it in a centered floating tabbed container on a fresh workspace. And that workspace here is workspace number two. Triggering it on a, a window that is already sen moves it back to where it came from. Uh, you, usually. We, we get back to this. <clears throat> um, of course, uh, I told you it's tabbed, so that means that we can we can send multiple windows to this. Uh, so now we have two windows that are tabbed. But I also told you this is floating, so you can move this one around, and that is what is uh, a big difference from from how i 3 sen originally worked. Um, and if we go here to this wiki page, there are some links here. I just wanted to keep them. Uh, the origin of this script is actually uh, here on Unix porn. Uh, I made this post here four years ago uh, just to showcase uh, some scripts I, I had been working on. You can see them here, i3get, i3run. So these guys were already uh, in the works here. Uh, I don't think I had a uh, compended i3s. Th this was just before, just a couple of weeks before I realized how to do this i3 FIDA and stuff like that. But uh, here you can see i3 sen. It puts a window centered uh, in the middle of, of, the, of a workspace like this. But this version actually uh, does this by creating three ghost containers uh, horizontally tiled on the workspace. And then it makes the middle ghost container tabbed and then moves the window to that middle ghost container and that means that there are two like ghost windows here um, but other than that it kind of worked the same here that, that you could send uh, uh, windows to it and it, they were put in the center but you would, didn't get these uh, the nice um, center comp truly centered container with uh, gaps above and, and below uh, the container. Um, let's move these guys back and this guy as well. Um, the reason I started working on this uh, stupid script again here is, um, as I mentioned, it has not, uh, uh, it has been public all along because I had it on as one of my gist scripts uh, so down here it is um, don't use this by the way I, I guess I should delete this or something so and or redirect everything to, to the i3s version now because that is more complete than this one uh, but this is what spawned my new interest in this because this guy Benjamin um, uh, made a comment on, on this four-year-old gist uh, saying that he really liked this script uh, and we started talking he had some requests and and uh, questions about it and i started hacking on it and and we um, yeah one thing led to another you know and i i, I just um, got fixated on on getting this script to work properly uh, so now it does that um, but uh, while doing this, I also discovered a very important thing that I didn't know about i3. If I fire this uh, again here, 
i3zen puts it on the next clean workspace, you know, workspace 2 in this case. And that means, uh, for example, if I create workspace 2 and a window there, workspace 3, a window there, workspace 5, a window there, go back to workspace 1, and then if we do i3zen now, it will put it on workspace 6 because it it just uh, loops through all the workspace numbers uh, and then it uh, the send container is created on yeah 1 plus the highest number of workspace says um, but you can also specify a custom workspace so you can say workspace hello and then it puts it on workspace hello instead uh, and that can be neat uh, if you want to do that, but this is where things got weird, uh, because I realized that if you fire this command, t get workspaces, workspaces, uh, it prints uh, a JSON object containing information about the workspaces. Let's pipe it jq so we can read what it say. And here we can see all the workspaces. We have one. Workspace 1, number 1, name 1, workspace 2, number 2, name 2, 3, 3, 5, 5. But then we have minus 1 and the name is hello. Uh, and I had no idea about this and this is very important. I, I kind of, I have completely missed this uh, detail uh, because minus one is what I thought was the workspace number for the scratchpad. And it is, the scratchpad also have works, uh, minus one uh, as, as its workspace. Um, but uh, it turns out that every workspace that has a name will get minus one if the name is not prefixed with a number. And what that means is if I create a workspace here, i3 message workspace, something. I have to open a window otherwise it will get destroyed here when I go back here because I want to do this thing here. We can see that something also have number minus one. So these two have the same number. If we instead create a workspace that we prefix with a number, I think it's okay to just prefix it like, <clears throat> yeah, let's say seven. Um, I don't know if we have to do this. I think you need some kind of separator between the mine. I'm, I'm not sure. I never use workspaces. I think it shows here. There. Now, seven here, that actually do have a number. Well, God damn it. Now it got destroyed since I didn't have a window there. Go back to hello and then get workspaces. Minus one, something. Hello, minus one. But then we also have this workspace here. It's a, actually seven something, and that will have number seven because we prefixed the workspace name with the number. Let's try if you, I'm not even sure. It would be good to know if we just uh, say nine something. Yeah, it looks like that also uh, will have number nine. God damn it. <laughs> nine something window, thank you. Something, something, nine, something. Yeah, as long as it starts with a number, that number will also be the number of the workspace. This might sound like whatever, who cares? But it actually means that then you can use like reference the, the workspaces without knowing the name and stuff like that if you do it correctly. We don't have to go into the nitty gritty about that. But what's important here uh, in my case is that I misinterpreted the scratch pad to have minus one. I had... Since I never use any workspaces, and, and especially not named workspaces, I hadn't really, I had never encountered this, but I, I, I know that a lot of people who use i3, they cannot use it because of this, because you can name and rename workspaces quite easily and stuff like that. So uh, that, that might, or that has <laughs> very likely caused a lot of issues for people who were trying to use, for example, my script i3 run, um, you see i3 run here is what I use here to focus sublime for example and i3 run works like this it, it tests <clears throat> if a window is on the scratch pad if it is it brings it to this uh, workspace and stuff like that this completely borked out if uh, the workspace was called or had had the number minus one 
uh, in that case it believed i3 run believed it was on the scratch pad and it got really awkward um, and i just realized uh, that is what that last release here was about that that issue that was also an issue in um, i3 list uh, regarding i3 fira layout because uh, I, it also uses this to see if a container is visible or not it just see is it on workspace negative minus or negative one then it's hidden otherwise it's uh, visible uh, but that doesn't work if if uh, the workspace is a named workspace not prefixed with a number so this was a very important lesson for me and it, it was actually I had to do quite a lot of uh, hacking on i3 run to get it work correctly and I found a lot of uh, other or related things here uh, and also this send script here to get that working if if the current workspace is named if it's not named if it's if, yeah you can do a lot of things with this uh, I guess now it got a bit uh, this this video got a bit weird here uh, let's let's move this back here and close these workspaces there, clean it up, clean it up. It's enough with two workspaces. I, I get a bit stressed out, I, I, I <laughs> will not deny. Um, all right, i3 Zen. Let's look at some cool features of, of it because I also extended it quite a lot uh, from the original version. You can i3 Zen. You can also set the width. And the width, you set it with a percentage. So if you do uh, 40, it will be a very narrow, uh, for, uh, the, the Zen container will be 40 percentage of, of the screen width. Uh, as you can see, the height is not 100%. It is uh, by default, I think it's 85%. Uh, but you can uh, modify the height as well. If we do it here, let, let's do 50% or something here. Uh, if I fire this command, what do you think will happen? This happens, it sends it back because it was already on the send container. So some of these options have no meaning if the send container is already created or if the window is sent. It, it depends a bit, you, you will see here. But now if we fire this, puts it here 40 with height 50. Um, but now also this means that um, if we do it in, in, in this window, not using mark, uh, or you can say with 90 instead, it will have no effect because the send container is already created. We just put it now in the already existing one here. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Let's send these guys back. Uh, and this guy back there. Um, you can also, it always puts it in the center of the workspace, but you can override that with Xpos, for example. Let's say 40 pixels, and then it will put it 40 pixels to the left uh, or to the right of the left side. Um, you can use negative numbers to have it 40 pixels to the right, but it's still centered horizontally. Of course, uh, you can also use YPOS. Let's put it at the bottom 20. And as you can see, it, it, it actually uses a, a actual workspace space here not the screen space it knows that the workspace starts here and not down here um, so that's cool that's something you can do you can also even if it is a bit weird uh, you can create uh, multiple centered containers here so let, let's leave this one here and then we can move this one as well there just i3 send we'll put it there uh, if we want to create another uh, container, you just specify a different mark because by default, the mark of the send container, the mark uh, or the container that contains the tabs, the default mark is center send. You can see it if you do it, i3 message t get marks, i put the jq. There's probably a lot of marks here, but there it is. This is the name of this container. But you can have a custom name here you can name it whatever you want 
And if it cannot find uh, a container with the mark, it will create a new uh, container on a new workspace. So there, now we have on workspace four, we have this one and on workspace three, we have that one. And then we can keep on sending. So without any options, it will send it to the default one, uh, the center send, this one. But oh, now I don't remember what the <laughs> what the mark was. Uh, custom name, uh, mark custom name. There now that is sent here. You can also, uh, as we just uh, as we saw in the beginning, you can specify a, a custom workspace. But that doesn't. Um, that will have no effect here. That is like the position uh, um, arguments. So even if we do workspace uh, 665 here, it will still put it on workspace three because it finds the center send container there and puts it there. But if this, um, if it didn't exist, it would have uh, moved it to workspace 665. I think, I'm not sure if you can have that high numbers, but maybe you can. Uh, if we do yet another here, mark uh, Deville, there, now we have that on workspace 665. So, I don't know, uh, I think this is a neat script and now it works a lot better than it used to with, with since the container is floating. And that is just cool that you can have a floating tab container. And you can also change the layout if you want to, you can use... Uh, split layout like this if you want to uh, but be aware uh, when you have a split layout in it uh, then it gets kind of weird when you try to resize now i'm resizing this it's it, it, it's difficult to, to get the effect that you want it's much easier to just resize uh, with a mouse uh, if you would do that and it is i would recommend <laughs> resizing and moving with a mouse when you have this container but it kind of works uh, to to move and resize with with uh, with keyboard shortcuts. But when you have a split container, also, if I move this to the left now, it will actually move uh, the container to the left uh, left order, like like it does here. You see, um, and it doesn't move the actual container. It will do that if it is uh, tabbed. Then it works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> Forget forget that. You, you have to move it with a, you have to move it with a mouse. I guess it works if you have uh, only have one container. If I move this to the left, no, that doesn't work either. So, yeah, you have to move it with the mouse. Um, here you can see I have uh, Sen as my workspace. You can see it here. Move this instead. So this is my command, i3 sen with 75%, height 95%. Verbose, uh, that would print a bunch of uh, annoying output if you are into that. And it will name the workspace uh, sen. And that means that then I can also have a key binding to focus that workspace. So here you can see shift z, super shift z, that uh, triggers workspace sen. Um, yeah, and I guess that's uh, <laughs> that's how that script works. Um, let's see, there were some more stuff in the release, right? Um, I3 King, this was the only issue that the new version of I3 uh, created for me. And that was the, you know, the title icon, window icon title thing here. It added a new property to the JSON and that wasn't... Uh, uh, considered with i3 king and that meant that i3 king didn't work with the new release of i3 but now it does because yeah all i had to do was add a single line um i3 run did a bunch of fixes for that so it works now toggling windows on named workspace and all of that uh, i3 list uh, also uh, takes this in consid consideration now and i also um, there were some issues with multiple search criteria, didn't really work, but now it does. And I added two, two new keys here. So you can see the active uh, Windows parent ID or the target Windows parent ID if you fire up i3 list. 
looks like yeah like this and that is so this id is the id of the parent container meaning the container that that, that contains all of these tabs uh, and that can be quite useful to to have ac easy access to that uh, id uh, actually added the feature just to make this <laughs> i3sen uh, stuff easier to create um, yeah so I'm, I'm really happy that i3sen is back um, and that I realized this thing about the uh, scratch pad here it's, it was like oh man I haven't I can't believe I hadn't uh, seen that before and it is in the, the docs in the user guide So I should have known about this uh, and I'm really sorry for those who have tried my scripts and, and uh, encountered these issues and they must have been really weird and difficult to, to because you didn't get any error messages as or the error messages you, you got in that case wouldn't be of much help. Um, so let's see, workspaces, using workspaces. Uh, yeah, it is here somewhere. There are so much about these workspaces. They, I, I don't know. Whatever. This is like this is how they have designed i3, and this is how it is, and it's a way to design it. This um, I kind of understand why they did it. It's it's better than nothing, and better than many other window managers uh, workspace uh, um, management. But uh, it is a bit confusing, and this is this is really <laughs> a, a sneaky, sneaky thing that it makes the workspace numbers negative minus one. Um, if the workspace name is not prefixed with a number, <laughs> and but also if, really, who who are bothered by that? It's it's probably just me with these scripts here <laughs> that that is the first one who, who actually got issues with this so they they have done a great job on on the workspace management and and it is really what's important is that it is a system it is logic to it and and they have exp and they explain everything in this excellent user guide i3 user guide so i should not uh, blame i3 at all this was me who uh, who was lazy uh, and didn't didn't um, read up on, on, on this stuff uh, thoroughly or the thing is I, I never use named workspaces I guess I will use it here for the send containers and now I just have the i3 bar here active just so we can see the workspaces clearly so everyone can see what's going on usually I don't have a workspace indicator or anything so all of that is reason why I didn't really uh, uh, realize this um, yeah Try i3sen if you want to. Uh, it have a bunch of dependencies. Uh, don't worry, it's not like uh, it's uh, it's just like it have i3 list, i3 var, and i3 king in quotation mark. Oh, I guess I should mention that what what actually happens there. Um, when we do this, if I send Vivaldi here to the send container, now we have two two windows here, uh, and when I move it back. Uh, i 3 sen will actually know that the Vivaldi was tiled when we sent it here and it knows that it came from workspace 1 so it sends it to workspace 1 and then it uh, makes it floating disable and when it does floating disable it also uh, tests if i 3 king is running in the background <clears throat> if it is uh, then it also um, tests if there are any window rules uh, uh, for the current window and apply them if it finds any uh, just like i3 fira does so we can we can test that uh, behavior here if i move this vivaldi back here and then if i focus this container here and then i uh, if i stop uh, i3 king which uh, i actually manage with systemd now so I have to do this, user stop i3 king, there. Now it isn't running, even if we can see the output here, because this is a lie. Um, 
it's actually yeah, whatever. <laughs> but uh, now this container has focus on workspace one. If I go to workspace Z or Zen here and trigger the Zen command, you see now it puts it here because it, it uh, sends it to workspace one, it knows it was uh, tiled, so it makes it tiled again, and that means it will put it in, in the focused tabbed container here. Um, I can just manually move it here, and that is why I added that test for i3 king. If we do the exact same thing again, send it to said workspace, go to workspace one, focus this container, go to workspace zen, send this. Now you can see it, you can kind of see it that it first put it here because that is where it wants to put it. Then it tests for the rule and puts it here. It's all happening quite fast, so so don't worry. Uh, but it actually takes yeah, it takes about two hundred and thirty milliseconds here because it both executes the i three send commands and the i three king commands, which is it is actually quite somewhat slow. It's it's about one hundred milliseconds to parse all the window rules. You know, it's quite a lot. I have it all depends on how many rules you got, but. Uh, 200 milliseconds that's a fifth of a second you know <laughs> so five times a second you can do this command uh, that's a lot faster than it takes me to realize that the window is in the wrong container and then move it to the correct container and it gets even you know if, if it's like this if we send Vivaldi here now to the send container go back to workspace one and then we hide the C container all together together like this uh, go to the send container, send Vivaldi back. You see, now it still it does everything we want it to do. Doing this manually is quite annoying. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm really happy with uh, how this turned out. And I think I will actually uh, use this. Feels like a nice thing to, to put the text editor sometimes on a workspace like this. You can focus more on that. Uh, probably not putting the browser in the same container, so you constantly do this, you know. But um, yeah, also the info window also put here in the correct container because it also have a window rule. Um, and I hinted here that I'm using System D. We will of course not go into that here, but um, probably in the next video. The last thing I want to mention is that I also updated the config example here uh, on the i3s wiki and added i3zen uh, to it. So you can find it if you search for mod z here or i3zen or something. Uh, one key binding uh, that send, uh, toggles between the send container and then also a mod shift z uh, that will just focus the zen workspace. And I uh, actually have these two key bindings in my own config at the moment and I think I will keep them so thank you for watching everybody have a great day bye bye bye